All right, folks, so I just wanted to do a quick video here talking about Baofeng Radio's FCC Part 90 certification and potentially the legality of using these radios moving forward. Now, before I get started, I did want to say that I'm not an expert, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not giving anybody a le any legal advice, and I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do this. I'm just kind of giving a perspective and then creating a conversation or a dialogue where we can talk about these kind of things. All right, so that being said, one of the things I specifically want to talk about is this radio, and it's a Balfang UV82. And these radios have gone through um, the certification process with the FCC and have attained Part 90 certification. This particular radio, though, let's see if I can get this cut battery cover off of here and show you. There we go. <laughs> that, the battery is a little difficult to get off. Let me uh, zoom in here real quick. And uh, what you can see by taking a look at this is that there is a sticker in here and it tells you the model number UV82, power, voltage, and the frequency. It also has a serial number, but what is missing is the FCC ID. Um, you use that FCC ID to be able to look up, and we'll post a link and we'll, we'll do this, um, where you go to a website and you can look in the FCC database and see the um, different grants that have been applied to that radio. That'll help you understand where it is okay to use it and where it's not. Um, if you take a look at this radio, this is a Baofeng UV82, and you can see clearly that there's an FCC ID uh, labeled on that radio. And when you go to the database, which we'll do, you'll see that this is Part 90 certified. And then here is an older uh, UV5RE+. Now where these radios get a little bit confusing is, is that the UV5R is Part 90 certified. And it's my understanding, and we'll take a look at it, that um, if a radio is a next generation that is electronically similar to the first, it can uh, use the same FCC ID. That said, when I take a look at this radio, there's a sticker there, but there's no ID. And it's my understanding that the absence of that ID means that this radio is not Part 90 certified. Same with this one as we discussed. It's not Part 90 certified because the sticker isn't there. Now some people say, oh, that sticker's just there for import reasons. Or other people will say, no, that sticker needs to be there for use as well. In the event that uh, there is some sort of conversation or investigation, uh, you would need to be able to show that sticker. So anyhow, let's jump over to the website and see what we find out. Links to any websites will be included in the description below. So I'm not really going to talk about all the different things that make up Part 90 certification. What I want to do in this video, as mentioned earlier, is I want to show how you could potentially determine if your radio is Part 90 certified. And we do that by starting off looking at Title 47, which lays out some specifications for identification of uh, these Part 90 certified radios. So the first thing I want to take a look at is section uh, two, uh, 2925 or 2.925 and this talks about identification of equipment and the first thing it says is each equipment covered in an application for equipment authorization should bear a label listing the following an FCC identifier consisting of the two elements in the exact order specified the FCC identifier shall be preceded by the term FCC ID in capital letters and we saw that in one example on a single line and shall be of a type size large enough to be legible without the aid of magnification. Also down here, in order to validate the grant of equipment authorization, the nameplate or label shall be permanently affixed to the equipment and shall be readily visible to the purchaser at the time of purchase. So if that sticker's not there when you receive your radio, how can you verify that it is actually what it is? And one of the concerns about Balfangs is, is that there are lots of clones, copies, or knockoffs. So you may have a radio that looks like a UV5R, but is actually not a UV5R. In the absence of that label, you can't verify. The other thing is, is that I have some examples that we'll take a look at in a minute where it looks it could be like a phony label or a counterfeit label, potentially applied to a phony or counterfeit radio, or potentially applied to a legitimate radio that has been shipped into the United States without going through the, uh, the proper import-export process. Also right here says, as used here, permanently affixed means that the required nameplate data is etched in grave stamped, indelibly printed, or otherwise permanently marked on a permanently attached part of the equipment enclosure. 
Alternatively, the required information may be permanently marked on a nameplate of metal, plastic, or other material fastened to the equipment enclosure by welding, riveting, etc., or with a permanent adhesive. And that's the label or sticker that we've been talking about. I did mention earlier that newer generations of a radio potentially may be exempt from going through the application process for an FCC ID if the radios are electronically similar. So when you talk about a radio being electronically similar, what exactly does that mean? And again, I'm not an expert and I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know exactly, but when I take a look at Title, uh, we're still we're still in Title 47. This is uh, Section 2.1043, and again, there'll be a link below. But it says, except as provided in Paragraph B3 of this section, changes to the basic frequency determining and stability stabilizing circuitry, including clock or data rate, frequency manipulation stages, basic modulator or circuit, or maximum power or field of strength ratings shall not be performed without an application for an authorization of a new grant of certification. And where this comes into play is, is we're going to take a look at a, uh, a UV5R+. Plus. And is that electronically similar to the UV5R? And can you use the UV5R FCC ID? I really don't know. Um, the other one is, is that we'll take a look at an example of a Balfang uh, BFF9V2 that has the UV5R ID on it, which leads me to believe that that's likely a counterfeit radio. Or a, uh, the incorrect sticker was applied in order to bypass import-export rules. All right, so here we are on a website by the FCC that allows you to search for the IDs of different radios and what they've been granted. So if I go ahead and click in here, I'm going to pick ZP5, which is the grantee code for Balfang or Pofeng. Um, it seems that grants have been given to both of those company names, which is the same entity but under different branding. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit search. And what this is going to do is pull back all grants given to Balfang. Now I could also put in the second part of the FCC ID which is specific to the radio just to pull up records to that radio in particular but what I wanted to do is pull back everything for Balfang. And what you can see is that there are 23 different records here. Taking a look at the top you'll see for like the, the UV3R for example there's three different um, records and each one is for a different upper frequency. So anyhow, when we take a look at these, uh, the first one that I wanted to talk about was the UV5R. And I can come over here and use this checkbox to display the grants that have been given to the UV5R. And so when you take a look at this document, you can see back in May of 2012, uh, Part 90 certification had been granted to Balfang for the UV5R. Simple enough, right? The next thing I want to do is take a look at the detail summary. And I get a little bit of a warning when this comes up. And what I can do is actually see artifacts that had been, or exhibits that had been submitted as part of the approval process. Uh, the first thing I wanted to take a quick look at is the label location. So this talks about where the label can be applied to the radio. And if you remember, we talked about the label requirement saying it had to be outside the enclosure. Even though this would be under the battery, it's still considered outside the enclosure and readily available to the purchaser. All right, let's go back over to here. And the other thing I wanted to show you is what the label should look like. And when I go ahead and click on that, this shows that it has the model number and it has the frequency. And then down here in compliance, it said it had to have FCC ID as a prefix. And then here is the, the grantee um, and then the actual, the actual model number or, or, or ID applicable to the device. Whew, saying a lot, it gets confusing. Okay, well that being said, let's take a quick look at some examples. Okay, so the first example I wanted to take a look at is this particular radio, and it is a UV5R+. There's a couple of things about this label that look suspect to me. Um, I'm not saying it's a counterfeit. I'm not saying the label is a fake, but it says exclusively for online sales on eBay and Amazon marketplaces. You don't typically see things like this on radio FCC ID labels. At least I don't. 
when you come down here, <clears throat> you'll see that the FCC ID ZP5BF5R is the same ID for the UV5R. Now, does that mean that this radio is electronically similar and is grandfathered in underneath that ID? I really don't know. But I got to tell you, when I take a look at this and I see about eBay and Amazon on here, and I don't see UV5R Plus in the list of grants that have been given to Balfang, I do get a little suspect. Now, that being said, here is another Balfang radio, and you can see from the model, it's the BFF9V2 Plus. And it has the FCC ID ZP5BF-5R, which is the one for the UV5R. Now, what we know is a legitimate BFF9V2 can go up to 8 watts. And when we talked about the things that are allowed to use the, gener the previous generation FCC ID, one of the things was power manipulation. And if you did that, you had to apply for a new one. So this is either a fake radio or a fake sticker or just a total counterfeit altogether because this FCC ID is not applicable to the model BFF9V2. Again, here is my Baofeng BFF9V2, and you can see ZP5 BFF9V2, not 5R, as part of the FCC ID. When you go back to the FCC ID database, you can run down this list, and you'll see that the, the um, 5R Plus is not listed. But as I go down, I can see the BF <laughs> F9V2 sorry, uh, is listed. <clears throat> Checking on the checkbox. I can see that it has been granted FCC uh, Rural Parts 90 certification. And then when I look at the detail for that, oh, I'm sorry, hit cancel. When I look at the detail for that radio, I can see that there is uh, an exhibit that shows the label. There it is. And that's what it should look like. And the FCC ID here is BFF9V2. Okay, the last thing I wanted to do is take a quick look at the UV82. So if I come down here and I click on the checkbox, I should be able to see what grants have been given to Balfang for that particular radio. And you can see Part 90 certification here. Let's go back to this screen. And the next thing I want to do for the UV82 is I want to take a look at the detail. So this would be the exhibits that were submitted as part of the application process. And I really just want to take a quick look at the external photos. And the reason that I want to do this is because I can take a look at these external photos and say, hey, wow, that really does look like my UVA2. Um, so I'm good. This is the same radio. Well, it might be and it might not be. Um, I can't really verify that without the, uh, without the label or the sticker being present. And that's a little bit of a kick in the pants. All right, so we kind of went through a lot of material. We talked about a lot of things, um, and it's somewhat confusing. You know, I did want to remind everybody, again, I'm not an expert, and I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not giving anybody any advice or uh, saying you should or shouldn't do something, just offering up a perspective. I did want to say thanks to everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave a comment with any questions or, uh, or, or just general comments below. I'll do my best to address them. Thanks for watching, everybody. I greatly appreciate it.